introduction and at the outset i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this mammoth challenge of uh, addressing the last session wherein the effect of whatever coffee we had is also fading off uh, now the potential of uh, air power uh, needs no explanation to this uh, august audience but it is evident from the fact that from the first part flight of merely 12 seconds by Wright brothers on 17th December 1903 it took less than 8 years for the first recorded uh, air means to be used for bombing during turco uh, italo turkish war on 1st November 1911 now uh, uh, aviation in general and military aviation in particular has seen the great uh, technical advancements especially in the last few decades and uh, military aviation has been the uh, biggest gainer of this technological advancement Uh, with the enhanced capabilities wherein lethality and accuracy of air launched weapon has increased drastically uh, the scenario of air power and air combat has gone through a drastic change wherein the concept has changed from carrying out traditional attritional war to effect effect based operations the deliberations have changed from calculation of strike package to calculation of number of targets that can be engaged by a single aircraft during a sortie and this has been made possible by emergence of asfs and mrca on the arena which are capable of performing multiple roles and tasks single handedly for which multiple aircraft had to be uh, deployed in the past now having said that with increasing uh, dependence and reliance on a single weapon platform the availability of this plat uh, platform during the mission has assumed greater importance than ever before uh, at the same time identification and introduction of the enemy aircraft of similar capability is of also of equal importance to deny the adversary an edge uh, during a combat at the same breath i would like to add that the maintenance and upkeep of every equipment whether it is a ground based system or a ground equipment itself which is ensuring the availability of our aircraft during a mission is also assumes equal importance be it a ground based system for guidance and control of our aircraft or be it a ground equipment which is ensuring that this aircraft takes off in time and for effective operation availability of all air and ground assets is imperatives now to cover the maintenance issues on indian sea inducted system in next 20 minutes or so i would cover my talk under the heads as shown and before i commence i would like to make a quote as someone said it is easy to design an aerial platform difficult to manufacture to make it fly is something to maintain and support it is everything in line with the technical advancements in the uh, military aviation the maintenance philosophy has also evolved wherein the approach has changed from traditional predictive maintenance to reliability centered maintenance or rcm RCM recognizes that every subsystem of an assembly or an equipment is does not have the same uh, importance for a process or system safety it re uh, relies on the inherent safety and reliability of a uh, component it, and uh, it re realizes the probability of failure under a given operating condition varies from subsystem to subsystem it makes use of the inherent uh, reliability at the design stage of a component and thereby establishes a maintenance plan which is uh, work towards saving the maintenance time and cost in nutshell rcm is nothing but a, f a combination of various maintenance approaches to optimize system maintainability and uh, availability now since the present maintenance philosophy relies heavily on the inherent design of an equipment a good system design is primarily a key to good maintenance program Now, over the year a number of indigenous systems have been inducted in the services and as we go along this presentation the definition of indigenous system in our scenario would become clear to us and uh, i would like to add a disclaimer here that the scope of my presentation is restricted primarily to indian air force and any commonality with other services is purely incidental not intentional now the primary supplier of indigenous system to services uh, are primarily dpsus which comprise of hl bl and bdl and equipment supplied by them range uh, cover the entire spectrum starting from aircraft to ground based radars to ground equipment some of the issues 
that uh, cover the indigenous uh, system, uh, affect the indigenous system maintenance are as flashed on the screen and I should dwell on each of them um, one by one. It's starting with the role of integrator. The expectation of Air Force from integrator can be broadly classified into the four heads as shown on the screen. Firstly is to act as a single point contact for all maintenance uh, related requirement so that IAF doesn't have to deal with multiple agencies. Secondly, have at least 50% component of uh, main equipment as indigenous so that we have the requisite technology absorbed within the country and also the local industry is made to flourish. Thirdly, uh, to ensure the optimal system performance wherein each subsystem of a uh, system should operate within the overall ambit of the given operational condition of a system. There should not be any suboptimal performance of any subsystem during its exploitation. And last but not the least is the adequate product support during the envisaged lifetime, wherein we also expect that the uh, proclaimed serviceability status are maintained during, maintained during warranty and AMC periods. However, what is offered is just contrary to the expectation, wherein we end up dealing with multiple agencies, the dependence on OEM continues and we have a lack of product support all around. To make my point clear, here is an example of system integration by uh, for SRE, uh, air traffic control radar, wherein the systems, various systems of a radar are as shown on the screen. Now, if we just have a look at the number of partners which are there in this particular game, to me it looks more of a vendor integration than the system integration. And our plight of handling with this, especially if you focus on the right part of the slide, our plight of dealing with the multiple vendors can be uh, very, very well understood. Now, talking of suboptimal performance of a system, there is no doubt about the fact, as I mentioned earlier, that each subsystem should operate optimally uh, given during the given operational range. But what has been seen is there are different operational ranges for different subsystems. To quote an example, for a Rohini radar, the overall operational range is from 55 to minus 20 degrees centigrade. But what has been seen is that air conditioning and heating system is non-functional below minus 10. Similarly, the liquid cooling unit and signal data process, uh, processor show erratic performance during uh, at sub-zero temperatures. Now, with IF equipment having been deployed in most inhospitable terrain, there is certainly a need to resolve these uh, issues for optimal performance of uh, system and uh, to ensure that the desired degree of op readiness is uh, achieved. Life cycle support. Uh, reliable availability of uh, an equipment over the envisaged life is possible only when the OEM or integrator, I would like to add another terminology here, indigenous OEM, because when I say OEM, you might get confused as to which OEM I am talking of. So here after, whenever I say OEM, it means foreign uh, agency and indigenous OEM is the one which has been responsible for primarily integration of the system. Now, OEM or integrator support is essence to system exploitation and what is expected is that they are expected to adopt a proactive approach to res resolve a reliability related issues in order to generate operators confidence in the system. A case in point is here is uh, cyclic saturation in ALH which is an inherent design problem and has led to two CAT1 accident including one fatal. Now, conceptualizing a control saturation warning system to resolve the problem partially, I say partially uh, because the problem has not been resolved fully, has taken more than five years for the indigenous OEM and even there the fleet modification is still pending. Now, talking of technological obsolescence, it is one of the major technology obsolescence is one of the major problem faced by IEF. Now, this primarily results from long gestation uh, period involved in developmental process. As we go along the presentation, this aspect would become further clear to all of you. And often, uh, we are blamed for redefining the QR. But in this era, wherein a cell phone bought today becomes obsolete tomorrow, are the QRs expected to remain constant for decades? And are we expected to induct gliders instead of fighters? But technology obsolescence is inevitable and it has to be need to it, it needs to be catered for from the very design phase with supported with a good R&D establishment which somehow appears to be lacking. The, 
the OEM needs to cater for midlife upgrade and also act in time before the uh, spare support dries up due to technologically obsolete component not being available. Now, maintainability is nothing but availability of an equipment, which is a direct derivative uh, of the time taken for uh, maintenance of a system. It's the most deciding factor in a given scenario of as to what is going to be the outcome. If your equipment is not available, you are not you are not capable of performing a desired operation in a given time frame. Now, the longer the turnaround time, lower is going to be the system availability. And the table uh, shown here gives you the direct relationship between reliability, maintainability, and availability. And why I'm bringing out the aspect of reliability here again is because all your maintenance program in today's era are supposed to be based on the inherent system reliability. Now, the new concept, which is uh, maintenance concept, which is on the card, is actually availability center maintenance, which will take a uh, effect of reliability and maintainability and give you the system availability which is going to be the deciding factor. Uh, example here is the turnaround time taken for servicing of ALH, major servicing of ALH which is 7 to 8 months. Now organization may give long list of reasons as to why they are taking such a long time for carrying out servicing of this aircraft but the fact that this kind of a maintenance schedule is not acceptable especially for a major servicing keeping in mind the fact that the major overall of, or major overall of a MiG-29 is virtually completed in the same time frame by the Air Force. Or neglect of support equipment. Now, this is one of the very major uh, area which actually affects our operational readiness. To quote an example, I, I'll again take on the mobile radar. And one of the uh, necessity of mobile radar is the uh, rapidity, rapidity of their deployment. It is required to ensure the void free coverage within the given time frame wherein it is required to move from location A to location B. And at times this deployment is expected to be completed in as less as 6 hours. Now the Rohini radars were bought as replacement to ST-68 which were known for its mobility. The Rohini has been found to be wanting in this particular regard and it is primarily due to the inadequate importance assigned to the various support systems such as vehicles, hydraulic systems, etc., which take a long time even for erection and lowering of antenna. And, and movement of uh, vehicle is just not possible at times. This affects the op capability of the overall system adversely. Now, if you compare a fighter aircraft without armament to a toothless tiger, then a mobile radar without desired degree of mobility, I would compare with a hawk without wings. Now, talking of mobility, I am also reminded of erstwhile GPUs which were inducted in Air Force as substitute to APAS or auxiliary power units uh, of Russian origin. Now these GPUs were expected to be the towable units which could be taken from point A to B to, to be positioned next to the aircraft. But it was other way around. The GPUs were stationary on the tarmac and we had to maneuver the aircraft to position them next to the GPUs so that the start could be given. Now more often than not uh, the proven systems are picked up by the integrators and they are offered to the system as having the proven track record or at least we are made to believe that that the system has shown a good performance otherwise. Now the post induction problems and failure which are enc encountered are beyond comprehension. Is it because of inadequate training of concerned DPS staff? I don't think so. Is it because of lack of expertise to resolve the petty issues? I don't think so. My opinion is that we have the finest brains available in our organizations but when we encounter such problems it only perplexes me as to why we are having these kind of issues here. The case in point is uh, ALH engine which is under license manufacture and on, a res on your newly manufactured engines we have found metal chips. There, have, there has also been a case of uh, oil cooler shaft failure on the uh, aircraft which led to virtually grounding of the entire fleet. The entire fleet has undergone the replacement of oil cooler shafts and even now the problem has not been sorted out fully. SRE air traffic control radar is another example wherein more than 1300 cases of high power amplifier failures have been registered and the number is still counting. There has not been any change in status so far despite introduction of numerous mods, revisiting and revision, revision of SOPs. Now, this is one of the major areas where uh, our indigenous OEM need to look for solution. A large number of borrowed components are uh, introduced into the system which is being integrated. As long as it is 
to speed up the process of integration or for hastening the equipment induction into the service to meet the deadlines it is perfectly in order we have no objections to that but after the system in induction the non availability of rh facilities continued dependence on foreign oem and reluctance to develop indigenous partner is somehow uh, not acceptable scenario an example is uh, the alh which came into series production in 2002 the dependence on hl uh, on oem still continues for more than 70 rotables a large number of which are actually mission critical rotables the cheetal was inducted in 2002 but till date no roh facility has been set up for engine and engine to quite an extent is common with the alh the status of rohini and sre uh, and pr is uh, is similar with uh, is still the dependency even for petty issues uh, is still being there on the uh, oem uh, this is primarily because of the fact that at the inception of the project the dpsus want to bite more than what they can chew and they land up into the con uh, capacity constraint in this particular regard they need to build up partnership with the private industries and set up facilities for various roh and other servicing facilities now we come to the transfer of technology and the at the time of uh, system induction the funds are shown which are earmarked for tot in the initial contract now the depend despite this fund having been allocated the dependence on oem continues for year after year at times for the entire life cycle of the equipment on expression of problems there we have found that there are no hesitation on accepting the lack of expertise within the organization and whenever a new situation is posed it is told that since it's a new area of engagement a fresh contract is required to be signed with the oem the case is referred to oem for even trivial issue minor modification here and there and minor mods the outcome is undesirable delay and the cost overruns in projects in reality whether the tot is actually taken place or not is is a big question or whether it is just a ploy to continue to milk the indian air force it's a big question now this is a issue though not covered in the initial uh, list of problems is your problem now approach adopted by the dpsus i would like to cover this because it tackles number of uh, uh, issues simultaneously now this happens when primarily it's the origin is from product support with, and the product support can be broadly classified into three basic categories first is spares where in, which are supposed to be available during the entire life cycle second is the availability of floats in order to take care for unserviceability and also for the repair delays which are going to take place and last but not the least is the repair and overall facility or roh facility for the main equipment as well as subsystems during the exploitation of the system now the problem occurs when the uh, integrator or indigenous oem adopts the approach of on field cricket empire and makes a signal your problem now now this third empire referral is primarily due to inadequate or absence of action on part of the integrator the only problem here is the indian air force becomes a all rolled into one it is the batsman it's the fielder it's the bowler and it's also the third empire and has to come up for a solution which was not actually his his problem the case in point is chetak cheeta and chetal helicopter for which during a meeting held recently the product support was ensured for next 25 years these uh, helicopters use 85 series main rotor blade and for which the production for uh, neither the production or roh facility has been set up till date despite these helicopters being under operation with if indian army and navy for a pretty long time now after few days of this product support meeting a very concerned indigenous oem told air force that mesas eurocopter which is closing down the facility for which uh, the hl was depending on them is closing down the facility so we have to work out next 25 years of requirement and uh, Uh, so that these uh, blades can be procured and bought and of course air force has to place the order otherwise who will pay for these my only response to the entire situation was this i don't know about others and especially in view of the fact that the hl is still willing to supply these helicopters to army and navy despite no product supports for blade being available now let's to see what uh, future has in store for us we are looking forward to induction of lca in the air force a lot has been said and published about the 
aircraft so i would just restrict myself to the present status in this particular scenario arda is the integrator and oem is going to be hl the current maintenance issues relate to maintenance and, uh, maturity in design and development and these cover certain important areas such as fuel brakes and software issues integration of lrus is uh, has turned out to be a big challenge even though the performance of all these lrus as in a stand alone mode is significant uh, and in certain cases exemplary the integration has led to drop in overall reliability technology obsolescence has already set in because the project is uh, decades old and this problem is uh, has has to be resolved Now, approximately 50% lrus uh, have been indigenized i especially cut that negative part and try to make the sentence positive at least there is should be some ray of hope as far as testers are concerned they are still being uh, developed and the documentation is not ready now with this kind of scenario uh, a lot needs to be done the good news is the product support group has been formed however it needs to iron out all issues before the squadron formation and induction of aircraft into the air force now if expectation from integrator as well as oem is to take on fast track indigenization of lrus to increase the self reliance quotient by the time aircraft is inducted in the service they need to resolve all issues related to integration to ensure high system reliability roh facilities need to be set up for the aircraft as well as for the systems during its exploitation we need to ensure that the requisite ttg especially the second line testers are available so that the aircraft can be exploited and the documentation especially the servicing schedule for carrying out various activities need to be completed if this is the scenario if in which the aircraft is inducted i don't think our flight needs any further explanation now to conclude i would just like to say that we all need to work towards our final objective which is to keep our frontier safe in order to do this involvement of all stakeholders is imperative all of us need to appro- adopt a proactive approach create a better understanding and synergy to enable the air force fulfill its motto of to touch the sky with glory i have finished ladies and gentlemen jai hind if you have any questions My name is Subramaniam sir. I am from HL. I am working for MRO division ALH. So whatever you have said, I can I agree for it. But there are some issues which I have worked with Air Force also for last four years. Out of my five years of six years of service in HL, I have worked in uh, Air Force like Sarasawa and Yalanka and Sulur. Barely I have worked. Personally, I have worked. In fact, uh, I got similar to HL. I also found some Air Force also got some lacune uh, in terms of facing uh, RMSO. I took I took that blame on ourselves uh, way back when I said we have been blamed yeah. for changing the QR placing QRs. AOGs in right yeah. in time and spreading AOGs and placing firm tasks. So which uh, as a public sector we without having a firm uh, task or firm RMSO we will not be able to procure. So there has been a lot of delays from our side because of these reasons. That is the first uh, first point I wanted to clarify. Second point is I was in Air Force for quite long time servicing of Eptors ALH. I have serviced about seven to eight Eptors personally. with my own team taken from bangalore <coughs> in fact i used to go and personally pick up the materials to city saranpur and delhi to make the expedite the servicing activities of course we used to take a lot of time almost we used to take about 4 to 5 months but what i found during servicing is <coughs> no off late hl as air force has really changed their mindset in earlier days hl ko de diya unka kaam hai aisa that mindset was there so i had, I had bring brought out some changes speaking to the commanding officers and stos so that mindset has changed now it will improve sir now the turnaround time will improve thank so you very much so force has taken initiative to uh, based upon their learnings sir and then servicing of lh and they have turned around faster than us that is because uh, they got more expertise now so learning has been quit far off they are learned very fast so but initially we had this hiccups that is a uh, yeah, amara ja ja aapka ja ja sir so that 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 thing has gone so that i found myself uh, 
I worked with them and I brought out changes. So almost all three Air Force uh, units I have worked. Along with Army, I found Army was little bit better compared to Air Force in terms of flexibility. So all these delays is because of this uh, sort of mindset it was there earlier. So I want the Air Force to little bit modify. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want my response on this? No, no. Uh, I mean, both the I mean, Air Force also changes mindset comparatively. And now we have also come, moved faster. Now and that uh, you raised the issue of Sarsava, <laughs> I would also like to flag the maintainability issues, uh-huh. wherein for the first one aircraft detachment, uh-huh. uh, AN-32 full load of ground equipment had to be carried to yes, maintain yes. that aircraft. Correct. Okay. That's a major setback for a single aircraft maintenance, which has to be carried out on an outside station that you have to carry an AN-32 full of ground equipment just to support one aircraft. That also shows the poor importance given to the maintainability aspect which I brought out. That the de- at the design stage, the requisite features have not been incorporated into the aircraft. Correct. And initially, whatever uh, uh, HF was there, we have brought out. Uh, but uh, planning has to be better, that's all from Air Force head also. And Air Force also, like here, HL is a big organization. It also involves air headquarters, then uh, unit level, then again the EDs, uh, so and logistic people. Coordination among themselves is a little bit uh, lacking. Talking so of change of approach, may I also request to change yes, yes. Uh, one approach of a, uh, HL? Uh-huh. Don't take advance from us before commencing the task. Uh-huh. <laughs> Any further questions? Please. You mean in the uh, ASR yeah, of the LCA? What are the points, no, sir? How many space you should have, like a percentage of mem- you can have Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You have all the Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Okay. What we Every ASR de- yes, depicts what we want. No, no, in maintenance space, after buying the items. Absolutely. It is there in ASR? Absolutely. Yeah, all the facilities, what you should have, DTCs. Exactly. Okay. So because Not only is in the ASR, it's in the ASR defines the qualitative requirements you want from the aircraft. When we uh, go in for an aircraft procurement, the first action is to decide what is it that we want in terms of performance, in terms of maintainability, in terms of availability, sir, it is in terms of MTBF. Everything yes, is sir. described. No, it is uh, what I, I, I'm working as a deputy, deputy project director for Avionics Product Support. We are seeing that all quantum is defined. But uh, when in detail, it is not given uh, at the end. When we are, example, uh, I'm seeing the IOC contract. Most of the 75 personal additional TTG, GHEs, GSE, we are uh, supposed to now give it, which is not been uh, listed. That means there is a lacuna in the system when the order has been given also. We, we are now with that, with that uh, system, whatever I was contract, it may not be able to work also. At that condition, now uh, the working people make question us, who are the integrator also and the HL also. That is what we are facing now. No, I don't understand your point, madam. What I am understanding is you are saying that you are asked to supply something more than what no, is in the contract. No, no. What is in the contract, it is not completely meeting the requirement what we are using it now, systems. Example, a TTG is testers. Testers, what is listed is 45 example, but we have additional 95 systems, which we are already using. And that without that, our technicians or whatever, maybe the people, we are not able to use the, our systems. Then we are, I am surprised to see how it has went through so many phases. GSA, GSA also many things, uh, it has been now, it has been asked by our uh, Indian Air Force, you have to do an integration, not a simple, simple uh, single uh, items. When it was being used and we are using the system for aircraft integration, but that they don't want to use and make it integrated system, that is additional work for us. Obviously, madam, look, <laughs> when you are working, you are a scientist. Who are we working with? No, 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 no. What? Maintenance? No, no. What I am trying to tell, sir, we are the we are the R&D department and HL is the PSUs and you are the users. There is a big gap. What we are not visualized in our, in our life cycle, and you may be using it, but there is a big gap in the definition of phase itself. That's the way we are ending. We are already ready with the LC example, but we are not ready for a squadron. Because we are not being exposed to that much requirements. Obviously, when you are doing... There is a big uh, gap. No. I what, agree, what we felt is like showing all the things. We, we have done it, our work. And we have done the documentation. We have done the TOT and certification. 
but it has not been done into documentation which has been required due to some other reason of HAL and we have been questioned now, our LCAT. But In every forum it has been questioned. So as a deputy, I wanted to tell, we have done our job, completed. Look, it's whenever you do things for the first time, yes, obviously sir. there will be problems and there will be issues which has to be sorted out. Yes, as sir. long as you have the mindset and the ability to recognize a problem, then it can be addressed. You know, if you it say there is no problem... It is too late because we are end of the mark one phase. So I agree, I agree. But you can uh, improve upon it in the mark two. Yeah, we There's have always a day tomorrow to yes, improve. Sir. Yes, sir. But we, we have been demotivated because it is coming at the end of our, like, uh, finishing our job. We are, we are, uh, it is showing that aid to complete. Look, I'm seeing from the past uh, two, three sessions, it is coming that we are not completed the job properly. <laughs> It's open to interpretation and yes, I guess, uh, yes. you know, I mean, each one has his own opinion on something of the such nature, yes. which is controversial. I mean, if, yes, you, if you ask one party, he'll say that, no, I haven't done my job. And the other person will tell you, no, you haven't. Yes, sir. Here is you have the, at the end of the day, who pays the bills? It is the user. Yes, sir. And therefore, the user is not satisfied. Obviously, the manufacturer is not doing his job correct. The customer mm. is king. Yes, sir. You agree? Yes, sir. Then <laughs> <laughs> in between, in between different parties also involved. <laughs> That's what we are trying to tell. Do you have another question? I'm Captain Sood from uh, Semilac, posted here from the Navy. <clears throat> I'm Air Technical Officer. I only regret that uh, there is very thin representation from Indian Navy here. For some reason, we were not. Um, invited or we have not uh, got enough notice to call people here because the issues which were brought out by principal director from air headquarters Vipas Pandey was actually very very commented by Vipas Pandey were very relevant for the navy also the issues which no, have been brought out for I've LC. already given my disclaimer yeah <laughs> the issues are very very relevant uh, for the integrator as well as for the OEM I feel uh, there is a lot to do um, as brought out by somebody here if LCA one has had some issues, I think it could be, you know, the, the issues could be made good for the uh, phase two or for the LCA Navy. I think there are, there's a lot of opportunity for you. Uh, I must compliment uh, Air Commodore Vibhas Pandey for his excellent lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Air Commodore. Any other questions, sir? Any other questions? Just a few clarifications, sir. Are there uh, any good softwares available for documentation? That is my first uh, clarification. Yeah. And are there any standard procedure and certifications for uh, documentation? Because my two years of uh, work experience in as contract engineer in defense, of course, I left my job and I have gone for my MTech program. Present I am in the project phase. Uh, every fresh engineer wants it to be a design engineer or uh, want to draw a very beautiful diagram in uh, AutoCAD or SAP. Katia. But the worst part is the documentation is uh, very, very neglected, even at, at uh, sorry to say, <laughs> at uh, uh, scientist level. Uh, that's why That's why I want to know, are there any certification courses available at, uh, for documentation purpose? There are, there are agencies who have been assigned with this particular task of certifying the documentation which has been carried out. Okay, and I have already brought out in this particular regard that the documentation is far from acceptable, especially if you are talking of LCA. The documentation is not ready at all. The I don't know about the operator's manual, but as far as servicing schedules are concerned, they are not ready. The second line servicing schedules are not uh, not yet ready. The overall procedure which is which would be required for undertaking the ROH of various aggregates are in nowhere readiness. The second line testers are not in any readiness. So I only wonder as to how we are going to exploit this particular aircraft. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I like to add, even though it's the very end of our session, there are very clear-cut guidelines on what the documentation should be for the user. Just like when you buy a car, you expect a user manual which will tell you how to start the car, how to operate its parking brakes, how to do various functions. There are very clear-cut specs and guidelines, you know, which are established. And these are the practices which have established for many manufacturers. All the equipment manufacturers in the world do the same follow the same set of guidelines. I mean, uh, perhaps Emila can give you uh, give you more information. Can you just give him the mic, please? Mr. Bagel? Hello. Uh, your uh, problem about the documentation, and Vivas is also telling LCA documentation. 
let me assure you when we started giving ioc 1 for the lca we had made the list of the document which by and large services are using to operate their fleet in the services it is a maintenance manual servicing manuals and related to flight uh, manuals also there are uh, my, in my memory 34 manuals are there which have we have taken the responsibility to coordinate the six flight manuals other manuals are as per the standard it is being followed there is no need of any certification these are the standard guideline as per the standard and the lca they have hired the services of the documentation agency and they are in the process almost all the documents are getting ready it is being certified by csdo and other relevant agencies of indian air force so don't say the documents are not being certified documents are very well defined and being certified by the services themselves no, no. i am not saying that uh, documents are not certified i, uh, I cannot are there any certification courses available for uh, uh, fresh engineers uh, so that uh, i can be a certified documentation professional like that because only there is, there is no course available because the guidelines are there those details should be there in the document it should be there uh, it should, because uh, that's it there is the, no question given whether the certificate certified engineer will certify that mm. it is a purely services requirement yes, and they have to certify their agency csdo and other uh, relevant agency to certify it yes. so the ss there is no course for the certification yes, of the document yes sir thank you Uh, thank you thank you akumar